This is In Boot Camp, Episode 2, Week 3, Off the Grid, on Saturday, January 26, 2019, with your host, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersett. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ib2. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Matt. How's it going? It's good. How about you? Good. Just completed Week 2, just about an hour ago. Week 2 of your boot camp. At the University of Minnesota. Of Minnesota, where the cows are on campus. They are really cold right now. Yes, uh, so when class got out Thursday night, they were mooing like crazy. Because they were freezing. I could guess so. Yeah. I don't know if they're doing something else, but they had, they've had they always been docile, and then now they're just... A little <clears throat> bit more aggressive. Yeah, very mooey. I don't understand how you can have cows in this weather outside. I didn't know that was a thing you could do. Well, it is a thing. Uh, well, um, so tell me about your week. I uh, I have been led to believe that you already missed a class. Oh, well, yes, technically I missed a class, but so did everyone else. Monday was Martin Luther King Day, and my class is structured with a Monday-Wednesday group and a Tuesday-Thursday group, and we all joined together for Wonderful Saturday, sharing class time. Mm-hmm. And to keep us on pace with the Monday Wednesday people, people that like me were in Tuesday Thursday group got class off on Tuesday. Cool. So I only went to class twice this week. That sounds like a University of Minnesota kind of thing, doesn't it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So uh, um, you know, last week you shared some homework with me, and um, oh, it still isn't due yet. We, we, they gave us two weeks to do it. And so the the idea of the homework was to start working on your portfolio. Is that, is that yes? Is that what it's like? Yeah, but. I, they said make it your own and everything else, but I didn't have anything to showcase and stuff. And then when the TA did the, well, because week eight or homework eight is to revisit it. Okay. Uh, Okay. Now that you can do all the fancy tricks and all the other Mm -hmm. things. So it's basically an about me thing right now. Right, right. Um, So say, said where I work, what my hobbies are, Mm -hmm. what I like to do with my time. And you have like a little... It doesn't do anything, but there's a little contact form. Yeah, they they wanted to do that. Because, I mean, when it's active and when you want that, you're going to want people to see your stuff and be like, hey, he's employable. I want to see if he's employed. And then, yeah, is not everyone uses uh, LinkedIn for actual messaging. Oh, I totally agree. Because how, how often have you been contacted internally by the LinkedIn people? Every day. No. Yeah. Well, aren't you a professional? Yeah, I get a lot of spam on LinkedIn. Um, if if you don't want spam on LinkedIn, basically just delete all of your work history because that that's what it correlates to. Like, if you don't oh. have it, they won't talk to you. It's great, cool trick. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's uh that that homework is a good start. Of course, you know that when you uh when when you don't have much to put on there, there's just not much you can do about that, and that's okay. And so I it, it is it's about me now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, so that's cool homework. So, what what what's your classwork this week been like? Well, um, Thursday was pretty much a refresher of week one. It kind of went over everything again, like at a lightning pace, though. Of course. Um, and um, they went over how they wanted us to actually submit it. Uh, they always said, "I'll oh, put it up on GitHub and stuff." And now they're like, "Okay, first you need to make it Git pages, and then everything else, and then." Give me a link to that, and we'll go from there. Okay, so is that was that what you're doing then? Yeah. You're you're going um, to have your actual portfolio website on GitHub Pages. GitHub Pages. That's cool. That's a really nice thing to be able to have, um, because it's just so simple and it's free. Oh, yeah. You don't have to pay anything. Well, so you viewed the um, whoever you interviewed the last time. Mm-hmm. Um, you saw how she had her portfolio thing on GitHub. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's great, and and it's it's super simple. It's free. It's just you, it's just built in. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Totally, highly recommend that. And um, and so this week they also introduced us to a lot more of CSS's abilities because before we were just literally changing fonts and colors and, and floats. Yes, yes. There were some <laughs> floats and some problems with that, but. Basically, today was just the, today's Saturday class was forget everything about last Saturday's floating class because there's bootstrap with grids. Bootstrap with grids. Yes, and um, which is itself an overloaded term now because there is actually something called CSS grids, which you'll get to after this, most likely. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, so this is bootstrap with flexbox grids specifically. 
Well, so they gave us a little link to CSS tricks, something, something, how to float box, whatever. Flexbox. Flexbox. A complete glide to Flexbox. And we're supposed to read that over the weekend. Or it's, allegedly. Um, I've read the page you're talking about. And in fact, I refer to it on a weekly basis because one of the problems, uh, and I talk a little bit this about on the fringe, which you can listen to if you subscribe to our Patreon. Love doing that. It's my favorite. Um, one of the problems with Flexbox is that there's so many properties, and it's not just how many properties there are. It's also the combination of using them together. There's so many that you can forget. It, even if you know what they are or you've had experience with them, you just forget because you, you just can't remember them. There's too many. Um, so it's great that you have that reference. So you've started using Bootstrap. Like Well, yeah, so they started us off with, you know, here's a button. Change the, yeah. make the button fancy. Yeah. Make the button do this. Make and it then look blue, it, make it look yeah. rectangular. And after doing that for like 10 minutes, they're just like, okay, now we're going to do what we're going to do it. Like, we're... We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're, we're going to go into grids. We're going to grids. But it's just, they, they spent all this time last week saying, okay, okay, got to learn this, got to learn this, got to learn this, and now forget it all. So, so, the re so I actually appreciate that a lot. There was a substantial portion of front-end web history where the only capability for positioning content on a screen was either a table or a float left and right. Yeah, they did make some... They said that sometimes you'll see... So, because W3Schools is still up and it's been around for like 20 years and stuff. Yeah. They, they made sure to stress that tables are for data only. Right. Tables are for data only. And of course... Being, I was there for some of. I was, I was long gone after the tables. Like I wasn't there for that. But the only capability was floating left and right and clear both clear fix. Um, so it's great to learn that because you'll almost certainly encounter it. Oh well, yeah, because there's once it's made, it never changes. You know how it goes. Pretty much. I mean, I'm sure they add stuff to W three schools all the time. It's yeah. just, yeah. But, oh, and actually, he made a point to say W three schools is great for you now. MDN, please. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and it's great that you're learning Flexbox now because Flex is the current standard for not only one-dimensional alignment on web pages, but it also has really good integrations with uh, even native layouts like React Native specifically. So that's great to learn. Yeah. And um... So what other CSS things have you been uh, learning about? Well, we we talked about pseudo classes for just a second and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been editing that because, you know, I have some history with that. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and like, you know, the A tag, the anchor, whatever, yep. you can, vi if the page has been visited or if you hover over and that stuff. Yep. I didn't know that actually now had a word to it, but it, it does. Mm -hmm. um, and then he gave us a list of other ones we could look at. Um uh, like the the not one, the not one's fun. So um, have can you think of a time when you might use a not? Just make another class. Yeah, exactly. And so there was a situation where I used not professionally for Ooh. a reason. Can't tell you what it is exactly anymore, but basically the CMS that I was working with forced a certain t you know class structure on the, like the the featured image on like this you know front page. And there was no way to change it. You couldn't add additional classes to it. Oh. And there was no way to select the things that weren't it. And it was very inconvenient. And so I thought, this is a use case for not. Question for you, Mr. Developer Pants. I am um, sometimes. Have you ever used First Child of? Yeah, occasionally. It's, there's IDs and stuff. You can make... There are ideas. So first... I couldn't think on just... Mean the only nothing kind of. So first child is useful, and uh, last child is also useful for certain things. You might not use it as a application level developer, but if you're developing um, like a CSS library, you can use it for automated clear floats. Okay. Um, you can use it for um, if you do. You know what a block quote is by any chance? It's one of the HTML tags that's pretty popular for Markdown use. Hmm. Um, a block quote is usually you know, styled differently because it's like a quote in a magazine. Like, if you've ever seen a quote in a magazine, they'll have the text, the text, the text, and then there will be some padding around a box and then the quote that's featured there. And it'll be in bigger text and look different. Well, so sometimes people will want to put actual quotes 
around it, like visible character quotes. But you don't want to have to type it in every time. You just want to use the element block quote around the text. Yeah. So with first child and last child, you can actually make pseudo-selectors and then target the pseudo-selectors you just made with content and style the quotes into existence. Yeah. Because so I know about like the code tag. Like, yeah. Uh, like it monospaces everything out, mm-hmm. makes it all so you can actually put stuff in there. Yep. And, um But did not know that one yet. And that is why I am in school, to mm-hmm. learn. And so I, I also heard that you were learning a little bit about accessibility. Tell me about that. Um... So remember how we were just talking about the pseudo selectors for the anchor thing? You can do with that. There's also one for focus, which I did not know about. Mm-hmm. Um, so when somebody's like tabbing through the page trying to find stuff, um, it makes a little some people outline. have the yeah, um, yeah. And but that's how voice to text things mm-hmm. pick up stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just and then the, one of the TAs gave us all a link about um, how to make the world better for people who have you know, visually challenged or have some other ailments that require them to use that. Yep. And, and um I believe there's a there was a really good talk about accessibility um fairly recently at JavaScript Minnesota and I'll see if I can find the video to that. Um because it was it was really in depth and you know accessibility doesn't isn't just for people who need accessibility features for their ability to use a website. It also helps applications be better for people who don't need those features because it puts the developers into a mindset, a mode of thinking that there is maybe a different way to make this simpler. Yeah. Uh, Good luck trying to find that. The JavaScript Minnesota YouTube thing doesn't have... I mean, they they put a lot of talks up there, but there's like months of missing stuff. I know. Like just months of this. I'm very aware. Yeah. But uh, and if you live in the metro area on the last Wednesday of every month, they have, you know, free pizza and lots of JavaScript talks. Yep, and it's pretty cool. Um, I'm a big fan. Uh, full disclaimer: Doherty's a sponsor, and that should be reason enough to go over there and eat the pizza. There you go. Eat eat our money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Isn't that how it works? Why not? I guess. Um. So so tell me about your professor. So your professor, you and I think you explained this last week. You know, he's a real developer. Yep. He works for lead pages. Lead pages. Um, um, he just comes across as being very knowledgeable. Does he now? Yes. That's great. Well, so you, I went to St. Paul College for a semester. No, maybe a whole year. I went for two semesters. Um, I didn't get that vibe from many. A, any. Oh, that's even worse. The, well, that uh, English composition guy, he knew his stuff. And the problem was that I didn't. And... <laughs> So yeah, you couldn't appreciate it. Couldn't appreciate it, but yes, that, that's how fine literature is sometimes. Because um, you did PSCO at um, yeah, Saint Paul College, and you had my professor. I had the same professor for like three classes. This Mark Rawlings guy. Yeah, and you knew him there. Yeah, I did know him from there, and it was not nothing special. Um, but, so your professor's been asking, you know, for for more understanding about what you want out of the class, right? Oh yeah, I got singled out. Um, well, so like singled out of five. Well, there's 30 some people, and then he's like, Hey, can I talk to you in the hallway? And I'm like, Oh, snap, what did I do? <laughs> what did you do? Well, that's the, what, normally when somebody wants to talk to me, they want to tell me about how I did something wrong and they want to chew me out for it. Why do you associate everything with your already existing negative experiences at work? Because I work for the post office? Oh, I don't know. I see. One of my first days there, I'm, it's. I'm going off on a rail, but I'm going to keep doing it. Um, I walked up to a collection box. I took all the collection mail out of it, and I put it in my mail truck, drove it away, put it in the bin, and then it went down to Egan. I got a talking to the, the next day saying I, I failed an aviation security something or other. And I'm like, huh, well, I missed my collection box. And then I find out that it wasn't my collection box. Like, I got chewed out for somebody else's thing. And at, it's just, I'm so used to getting chewed out. Okay, so what did your professor ask you? He just asked me what um, I wanted out of the class and what my ambitions were and stuff, because I guess I don't really remember it, but the first week and stuff, when we went around and stuff, they asked, like, why were you taking the class and stuff? Oh, I just thought it'd be kind of fun. And I did think it'd be kind of fun to take and this I think, class. I think that's a totally legitimate answer. But he just wanted to know a little bit more, yeah. and that I am looking to do something else someday. Right. So, have fun and more. And more. That's what I should have said. Whoa. That's that's crazy. 
Um, yeah, I hope I hope he. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the program offers in 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 the way of like connections with other employers and stuff. They claim to offer a ton. Yeah, they claim everybody claims to offer a ton, but we'll see what that actually manifests into when the time comes. Yes. And so I I wonder if there's like, you know, if there's some promise in a student uh, in a student they they think about it earlier or something, you know. Yeah. And just want to touch base with a few of us. Yeah. Maybe and maybe that'll happen throughout the you know course. So like maybe every you know, a couple of weeks, they'll just ask and check in individually. Yeah. It's a possibility. Mm-hmm. And you were just first on the list. Well, I think I tripped a red flag, too. Well, why? Was it the beard? You know, a few people have beards, but they're just, like, little tiny, <laughs> like, <laughs> just... For the audience who's not in the room, Matt air-quoted beards. Like, you have a beard. It's kind of short. What what these people are calling beards is, like, they didn't shave for a week. So, so the difference is, I have a beard because I do. Yeah. <laughs> but I have it somewhat trimmed so that I don't have to keep eating it. Well, I mean, just eat around it. I, I try not to be a barbarian. Mm, I think you're missing out on life. I know. But no, it does kind of hurt sometimes when you take a big bite of a sandwich and your mustache is in the sandwich. And it goes with and, you, yeah, I know. Yeah, it just, that, and you just bite on this, like, eh. Yeah. But so, beards are awesome. So what, 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 are you, what, what, are the, what are the what are the courses look like for the next week or so? Um, I'm guessing it's going to be really heavy bootstrap oriented for a few more weeks. So um, one of the interesting things about Bootstrap in particular is that it's kind of an interesting gateway into JavaScript. So Bootstrap is a CSS framework primarily, but it also when has... When you look at all the stuff, it's all sassy and... Yes, it is, but it also has many already existing and ready-to-go JavaScript components. So like you can have little drop-downs and little interactive things, and you know they, they pretty much do what you want them to do. Um, so let's see, like they have little carousels ready to go. That's kind of fun. So you can have like a little image slider. They have modals. Um, they have little progress bars, popovers, um, you know, things that need JavaScript to work that CSS can't do alone. And so I wonder if you might start looking at a little bit of jQuery or JavaScript, you know, just to get the, uh, palette wet. Yeah. Yes. Um, Yep, so Tuesday will be more bootstrap. That makes sense. Oh, jeez. And Thursday of next week will be the joys of JavaScript. So There you go. That makes sense. One more sense. day of bootstrap and now And then JavaScript. Going. So that'll be that'll effectively be week three then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's really good. I think you're on a really good pace so far. And I have been so thrilled with this course. And so do you feel do you feel like good that you're in a spaced out course right now versus doing this every day of the week? Absolutely. Because um, this gives me time. Well, because class isn't set up to get everything done in class. Like, mm-hmm. so on the way out, it's like, hey, read this thing about Flexbox. Hey, right. re- do this. And I feel like I'm getting more out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can go home, do some reading, do some playing independently. you. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Please do. I uh, broke Git the other day. You did break and, Git the other day. Well, so I had Git working with my SSH keys. Did I broke it, something, something. I cloned a repository with HTTPS, and then I couldn't switch back. Mm-hmm. I had to change origin and... Change remotes, specifically. Change remotes and yeah. just uh, do it right the first time and don't screw up. Or do it wrong and then think, well, crap, now what do I do? And then Google well, it and then find no answers. That's the thing. I... Wasted a good hour before I just did it. Like, oh, oh, I had it happen once. Yep. And um, one of my um, one of our technical architects, he always said to the juniors, you know, if you if you've been stuck on a problem for more than half an hour, just just go find somebody. Like, just don't don't waste your time. Just waste somebody else's time. But it's okay. I feel more like better about myself when I find my own answers. Oh, totally. But also, don't stay perpetually blocked. I think that's the point of the 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 model yeah. um finding your own answers are, is great but sometimes the problem is you might have a problem and you might see an error that's given to you but you might not know the context for that error's broader meaning and so it might be hard for you to search for it so 
Because I couldn't. I, exactly. So it, it sometimes it's better just to ask for advice after, you know, half an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. I'm glad uh, glad that the course is moving forward smoothly. Yep. And I'm excited for next week. Great. Um, anything else? I think that's good. Uh, that's all for all for the now. Second week of in boot camp. Yes, and the, and ironically the third episode because that's how we count here. Yes. Um, you know, link that one. Yeah. Um, so where can we find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me almost exclusively on my GitHub, Matt Petchel. That's excellent. I yeah. think I don't know how GitHub URLs work. I think that's just GitHub.com slash Matt Petchel. Uh, pretty sure. But it, Git Pages is like subdomains. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. You know, the great thing about being in front of a computer is that I can quick verify. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be signed in as myself. Yeah. So GitHub.com slash Matt Petchel. Cool. That's great. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at Ryan Martin, and of course on my website, RyanRamperside.com, where I have links to all the other things, like my own GitHub, which doesn't have much on it these days because I code for various workplaces. And you can't just share that. Yeah, it turns out very sad. Um, and so, uh, yeah, good, good work on the show today. Thanks for coming. And we'll see you in a week. Yep, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.